So how do you know what kind of aqidah to follow? In fiqh, you pick from the four madhabs. Do you pick one aqidah? Can you mix and match? Okay, so that's a very good question. And um, in the tradition of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, um, it was believed that, uh, you know, that we have three dimensions of Islam. And this is based on the prophetic hadith, which is known as the Hadith of Gabriel, Hadith Jibreel, which I'm sure all of you know. Hadith Jibreel is an absolutely authentic hadith, and it uh, has different transmissions. But in the Hadith of Jibreel, um, Gabriel comes to the Sahaba in the presence of the Prophet وسلم, and Jibreel asks, uh, what is Islam? And you all know that Hadith. This is a beautiful hadith. And then, what is Iman? And what is Ihsan? This is the transmission of Abdullah ibn Umar and also of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhuma. There's also a transmission of Abu Huraira in which it's a little bit different. In the transmission of Abu Huraira, which is in al-Bukhari, uh, he asks first about what is Iman? And then what is Islam? And then what is Ihsan? So uh, the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that the deen has three dimensions. You have the dimension of Islam, which is outer obedience to God. And the science of that is fiqh. Fiqh, which is understanding. That how do we understand this? How do we apply this wisely? And uh, we believe traditionally that there are four great imams of fiqh. And they are Abu Hanifa, Malik, al-Shafi'i, and Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And traditional Sunnis believe that all of them have Buddha. All of them are rightly guided, and that any of them is sufficient for you if you follow him. Um, today we have many Muslims who don't understand that or who don't agree with that. And that's a very serious point. But one of the realities of Islam is the fact that Allah in His wisdom, He gave us a deen that has muhkamat. It has in it matters that are absolutely clear. They are qat'iyat. These are Ummul Kitab, they are the foundation of the revelation. And all of us agree on that. And then you have Mutashabihat, and you also have things that are Dhaniyat, you have things that are open to interpretation. Most matters of fiqh are open to interpretation, they require interpretation, they are not Qat'i. And Usul al Fiqh, which is one of our great sciences, goes into that. What is qat'i? What is dhanni? How do we make that distinction? So every Sunni school is a madhab, it is a methodology. You may say, but Abu Hanifa doesn't follow hadith. Abu Hanifa does follow hadith. But he does it in a particular methodology. He has a particular methodology for that. He has ta'amimul adilla. he has other things. And he's brilliant. Abu Hanifa is absolutely brilliant. We have to respect him. We have to understand him. If you follow Abu Hanifa, you will be all right. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. Imam Malik has a different, different methodology. And for example, uh, Imam Ahmad has a different methodology. Imam al-Shafi'i has a different methodology. Even the different sources. So for example, uh, all except the Qur'an, but... Um, what about the Mursal Hadith? What about the Hadith that is not connected? In which, for example, Imam Malik transmits to me from Muhammad ibn al-Baqir that Imam Ali said such and such about the pilgrimage in the Muatta. Okay, is that a valid Hadith or not? Some scholars will say, no, it's not, because it's not Musnad. Imam Malik will say, no, it is valid because I am the Mursal. I know how I got this Hadith. And so whatever I left out, you can be sure that it's valid. So in the Maliki school, the Hanafi school, the Hanbali school, the Mursal Hadith is a hujjah. As long as we know who is the one who is giving it to us, and we know that that person only took from reliable people. 
And then also you have Qawl al-Sahabi, and you have Athar al-Sahaba. You have the post-prophetic reports. Do they constitute Sunnah or not? And some would say, no, absolutely not. Imam Abu Hanif would say, yes. Imam Malik would say, yes. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal would say, yes. Okay, but according to certain rules. And then you have also Amal. You have the early practice of the community, which is an important thing in Hanafi fiqh of Abu Hanifa and especially in Maliki fiqh. That the Prophet established Islam in Medina and it was given there to the Sahaba and to the Tabi'i and then they give it to the generation of Imam Malik. There's only two generations between Malik and between the Prophet. So was this transmitted carefully? Was it not? Some people say, no, we don't accept that. And you don't have to accept that. But the Malik will say, no, we do accept that. And we accept it according to the ulama from whom Imam Malik said, who tell us what was the established practice of Medina. And was it transmissional? Was it uh, ijtihadi? Okay, these are really important questions. So the four Imams are among many Imams, Sufyan al-Thawri, uh, al-Awza'i, al-Layth ibn Sa'ad, who was here in Egypt, who was a great faqih, you have many. But the Imams who have schools that will continue, these are the four. And in traditional Sunni fiqh, you have to respect that. And uh, this is an important question, and we have to touch this very carefully. We don't want to disrespect anyone, and we don't want to have trouble. But we need to be able to discuss, and we need to, to be able to learn. And it's very important to understand how these Imams understood the deen. They were not simple people. They were, not, they were people who had profound understanding. In the Iman, we also have different schools. So we have one approach which is essentially Athari. And this is that we will follow the Athar of the Prophet وسلم, the Hadith of the Prophet, and the verses of the Qur'an, and we will avoid interpretation. Okay, so when we have verses that talk about Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa we just accept that like it is, but we don't interpret. We don't say that God is a body who's on a throne, and the throne is bigger than God. As Imam Malik said, when the man came to ask him about Ar-Rahman ala al-Arsh istawa he said that uh, Al-Istiwa'u ghayru majhur, wal kayfu ghayru ma'qur. Okay, so it's, it's bila kayf. In other words, we accept these things, but the mutashabiha, we do not interpret. And this is a very sound school. This is a very sound belief. And then we have also the school of Imam al Ash'ari. Imam al Ash'ari, um, he interprets the aqidah in a way that is according to the Quran and the Sunnah to protect it from different. Uh, sects and different philosophies that had occurred in his time. Okay, so this is also a valid Imam and he has a rich tradition, a very brilliant tradition. And you also have Imam al-Maturidi. Imam al-Maturidi is, also has a profound methodology uh, for understanding these things. So traditionally we say you should follow one of these three approaches and respect them all. Respect them all. And then you have also Ihsan. And Ihsan is the way of moral perfection. And that also needs Imams. And the Imam there is Al Junaid al Salik, Al Baghdadi, who puts down the rules of Ihsan and uh, you know, the, the science of that. So the Deen is all of these things. And that's why we always want to seek what is authentic. We want to think, seek what is authentic in belief what is authentic in practice, and also what is authentic in the path. Um, can we stop and eat now?